So I thought I'd take the time to do an overview of supercharging in the Model Y. I don't anticipate this being much different than what it is in the Model 3, including speeds yeah, and everything like that, but I'm gonna take the time to do a full review and take a look at how it, uh, how it does. So the supercharger we're headed to right now is a uh, level two, it's a V2 supercharger, and it's not too far from my house, but it maxes out at 150 kilowatt hours. So this should be a good representation of the average supercharger across the country. I know there's some that are slower, um, and then of course the V3 at 250, but we do not have a V3 here in Indianapolis. So uh, should be a good uh, overview of the speeds to expect. And maybe there's some differences uh, compared to the Model 3. We're gonna find out together. Tesla's offend people so much. So let's get back to it. Now you have arrived at your destination. All right, so now we're here. So I gotta show you a couple things with this. Uh, if you're not familiar with a Tesla, wait till you see this backup camera. This is the nicest, cleanest, crispest backup camera I think I've ever seen. It's super nice, very detailed, easy to see, and just like that. All right, let's see what kind of charging speed we can get here. figured as low as the charge that we had at 14% right now that uh, it would ramp up pretty quickly. I think we're right in the sweet spot for um, pretty fast speeds at the front end so we'll see how high we can get this charge rate to go and find out where the taper point is. Unfortunately, somebody came and joined our cabinet, so our speed got cut, basically. Um, so, instead of sitting here at a shared charge speed, um, we'll probably wrap this up. And uh, we almost got to 50%, but you could see 45-ish percent is when it dipped below 100 kilowatts. So, um, that seems a little early to me, based on what I've seen on some of the Model 3s, but... Um, let me know in the comments what uh, what you think. Was that a good charging session? Uh, seemed a little light to me. And, and then in case you're interested, show you what kind of charging speed we're getting from the mobile connector. So we have the mobile charger and I went ahead and bought the NEMA 1450 adapter um, and we had a outlet installed. What's nice is our car can be really close to the panel, so it was very reasonable to do this. Now we have a gas cooktop, and our, our panel had a um, electric cooktop outlet, so all I had to do was go from 30 to 50 amps uh, on the panel. And then I've just got this here. We've got it plugged in, green light. And now let's compare that to supercharging at the 150 kilowatt station. So 
in my grudge I'm getting eight kilowatt hours um, speed 32 amps 240 volts so this is the kind of speed you can expect from a mobile charger with a um, 240 volt line so it's max at 32 amps you can't go any bigger on the mobile charger uh, let's see what that looks like in miles here <laughs> display and it looks like that's about 29 miles an hour the thing i don't like um i really wish that there was a quick shortcut to do this i noticed that i'm switching between energy and distance frequently i really wish that was right here or maybe even like up here just a quick flip instead of having to go from screen to screen to switch back and forth anyways that should give you a good idea of the difference between supercharging and using a mobile charger if you've enjoyed this video don't forget to click subscribe and like the video and we will catch you on the next one